This week's drive, we race down memory lane, watch a French clean sweep, race without wheels, and see a British classic built for a French one. All this and more in this week's Drive. BAR driver Jacques Villeneuve was treated to a blast from the past in Valencia when he took a ride in a car that defined Formula One racing in the early 70s, the wedge-shaped Lotus 72. Take it easy. Villeneuve turned back the clock to take a drive in the car which South African Dave Charlton raced in the South African, French, British and German Formula One Grand Prix 30 years ago. Charlton, now 65, was South African drivers' champion six times, but failed to finish any of the European races he contested. This time, the car was at Valencia in Spain. Jacques is only a year older than this car. Hey, the steering doesn't come off. <laughs> used to being in a car where you know you're safe you can push to the limit you can make a mistake and walk out of it where with these cars uh, you push the limit and make a mistake there's a good chance you won't walk out of it and uh, the, the problem is once I once I sit in a car then I wouldn't be thinking about it and I would still go to the limit so it's better to avoid it <laughs> years of difference at the sharp end of racing development makes for a world of difference. To the world of observed trials now and the rainy Isle of Man, more famous for the TT or tourist trophy races. Multiple indoor and outdoor world champion, British trial star Dougie Lamkin, continued his domination of this year's championship, taking a clean sweep of honours at the Grand Prix of Britain on his Montessa Honda. Another Briton, Steve Colley, made a spirited charge, but it was not enough to claim second place, and he had to settle for third. Rain offered some slippery rock face challenges, but Lamkin won by 17 marks from teammate Fujinami, who provided the early threat with neat, tidy riding. Spain's Albert Cabastani was ousted from the podium by Colli and dropped to fourth place ahead of Adam Raga, Mark Colomer and Joseph Manzano. Lamkin is now way ahead on the leaderboard with 80 points, while Fujinami and Cabastani are equal second on 58. Motocross Grand Prix season continued with Castiglione in Italy hosting the fifth Grand Prix of the year. Arch rivals Stefan Everts and Joel Smets started the 500cc race on pole and second place respectively, but the Belgian dominance of the 500cc category would soon come to an end. 29 consecutive 500 races have been won by Belgian riders, but France's Yves de Maria battled to the front and held on to win. Smets retired with engine failure, allowing reigning champion Everts to claim third place. 
Monique Burfoots held on for second, finishing 10 seconds behind the race winner, De Maria. De Maria's compatriot, Michael Pichon, took pole position in the 250cc class for the fourth time in five races, but fell off his Suzuki in the early stages while third. Josh Coppins also suffered an early fall, but the New Zealander fought back from 13th place to take the race lead. However, the Honda rider was unable to hold off Pichon, who went on to win his fourth Grand Prix of the season. Coppins finished second and now trails Pichon by 17 points in the overall standings, while Germany's Pitt Bayer took third place, matching his position in the 250 championship. A unique hat-trick of French wins was completed by Michael Machio, who won the 125cc race. Mascio beat off a spirited challenge by New Zealander Ben Townley, who finished second, and Mascio picked up his second Grand Prix of the year. Townley needed painkillers just before the start, following two practice crashes. Patrick Capps of Belgium finished third and remains in second place in the overall 125cc standings. to Badagost now for the Polish Speedway Grand Prix, where a sellout and very patriotic crowd was on hand to support local star Tomasz Golob. The 30-year-old Golob led from the start to win the Grand Prix of Poland to the delight of the thousands of fans who turned out to see their local hero. Tony Rickardson of Sweden, the defending champion and winner in Norway a fortnight earlier, fought hard but finished second ahead of Mark Lauren of Great Britain. Australia's Jason Crump was fourth, with his compatriots Lee Adams and Ryan Sullivan taking fifth and sixth place respectively and not making it into the four bike final. In the overall championship, Rickardson leads with 45 points ahead of Sullivan on 33. Golub's win, his seventh, puts him joint third with Crump on 32. We go to a different kind of motorsport now, Formula One power boating. Thousands of Italian and Swiss fans lined the shores of Lake Laguno at Campione in Italy to watch 20 of the world's best circuit boat drivers compete at the Grand Prix of Italy. Italian Fabio Comparato was in the lead when the race had to be stopped following a first lap accident between Portuguese driver Duarte Benevento and Frenchman Filippo De Sotene. Benevente ended his day at the turn boy, while Desotene was able to restart and finish ninth, despite losing two laps getting back into the event after the restart. As the boats battled side by side for many laps, Venetian driver Comparato took the lead away from Capolini in front of Guido's home crowd until another restart resulted in being upstaged by Capolini. The lead of the race changed three times during the 45 lap event as weather conditions played havoc with the positioning of the turn boys and the wind got stronger as the afternoon rolled on.
Franco Lady ended his race in spectacular fashion and had no further part in the event after slight contact with a marker. Francesco Cantando survived a near disaster as his boat took off in the rough conditions and was no match for the six times world champ on his home water. Comparato was to finish six seconds behind the reigning champ. Mike Siebold couldn't hold on to his fellow American, Scott Gilmer of the Emirates team, who finished third. Only 10 boats finished the race, all within 25 seconds of each other. Capellini now has a perfect 40 points after the first two rounds and leads the pack as they head to the next event in Helsinki in Finland. Formula One powerboats are one of the world's most difficult motor racing vehicles to control as drivers navigate sometimes rough waters on a two kilometer circuit, accelerating from zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.5 seconds and to top speeds of around 225 kilometers an hour. The quirky and independent British car company Morgan has shown off its new racing model. The new GTN racer has already been approved for entry in the Le Mans 24 hour. The Morgan car has always been a distinctive sports car, but this new model is built for the racetrack. It features a 4.4 litre BMW V8 engine, a six speed sequential gearbox and hydraulic power steering. It's the first production competition model to be built by Morgan and is basically delivered fully race prepared. The car is built by the people of Morgan and the people of Morgan, we have some fantastic technicians in Morgan who have over the years developed amazing skills and uh, we are very lucky to have those people to develop what I think is a dynamic driver's car and that was above all the most important thing, it must be a real driver's car. Morgan makes around 700 custom-built road cars a year entirely by hand. The road cars are built with a separate body attached to a wooden frame, exactly as they have been for over 60 years. The racing model has a much stronger chassis than the road car, and it also has a heavier price tag, around 180,000 British pounds. There is currently a three-year waiting list for road-going Morgans. It may look like a toy, but you still need a license to drive this battery-powered vehicle. A vintage-style model, oddly named Modern Times. President of Takara Company, Kato Sato, hopes the two models of single-seater electric cars will be sold in toy shops, car dealerships, motorbike and bicycle stores. The car's battery can be charged from an ordinary electric socket and it has an 80-kilometer range. In addition to Modern Times, there is the 2010 model. Sato said he decided to enter the motor business because the fans of the company's toy car Choro Q and the latest radio-controlled Deji Q seem to be a potential market. Deji Q made a mega hit recently and Choro Q has been popular for a long time and now those fans become adults and they asked us to offer them something fun again. That gave us the idea to create it, battery-powered cars. These are the original penny racers, tiny pull-back-and-go toys. With our know-how for how to have fun, we believe there are huge amounts of chances for us in other industries, especially in the motor world. That's why we decided to enter the motor business with it. The toys of yesteryear have been replaced by more modern playthings. The new version is the same size but is radio controlled using technology borrowed from the mobile phone industry. People pack into Japanese nightclubs to race their favorite cars over simple courses against other mini car fans. The single seat of cars are part of the company's strategy to develop toys for adults. Other products include karaoke systems for the home, 
robots that can open beer cans, and remote-controlled cars targeted at young men. The 2010 model, with a maximum speed of 60 kilometers an hour, is likely to be priced at under 1 million yen. It's about $7,500. And the vintage-style version, a little more. Takara says it is targeting not just young men and women, but also the elderly. Takara has set a modest sales target of 1,000 units in its first year, but Sato said that the vehicles would be profitable. French tyre company Michelin has launched new tyres specifically designed to satisfy the needs of drivers in Asia. Michelin also introduces the Pilot Proceeder. The Energy MX V8 and Pilot Proceeder are among the quietest and most comfortable tyres around, especially important to motorists on the rougher roads in some Asian countries. The two products that we are launching today Energy MX V8 and Pilot Preceda are key steps in our development in Asia. Uh, with these products, we are bringing uh, worldwide technology, all uh, our worldwide resource uh, in terms of development for products specifically tuned for Asian markets. So for us, that's, uh, I would say, the best of both worlds, uh, group involvement and, and, and local uh, adaptation of uh, our technology. Car manufacturers, tyre dealers and motoring experts from all over Asia have been testing new tyres which for the first time are specifically designed to satisfy the needs of Asian drivers. At Michelin uh, we have the international technology that we can uh, bring to the benefit of the Asian consumers and Australian consumers uh, by uh, for instance uh, offering best possible level of comfort with no compromise on other performances with the Energy MX V8 or with the Pilot Precida. Michelin developed two new models which they unveiled at a series of events at the Baira Racing Circuit in Pattaya in Thailand. Even allowing the participants, composed of representatives from top car manufacturers like Mercedes-Benz and Porsche, tyre dealers and motoring journalists, to compare the driving performance of their new tyres against rival brands. And then you have to move on the right side smoothly again, no, never put very strong steering angle. And feel the difference. Now we move back to the pit and you will have to drive by yourself. Asia is really a, an important market for Group Michelin. We are already leaders in Europe, we are progressing very fast in North America, and with uh, potential markets like China, uh, critical markets like Japan, it's uh, really important for us to go from a status of challenger to leader uh, very, very quickly. The new tires were created following research among 6,000 motorists in eight Asian countries on the desired qualities they wanted from the tires on their cars. Performance and comfort were top of the list, and tires which eliminated road noise and tire rumble were considered important to drivers and passenger comfort. What's the distance that we're going to have? After this turn, I Very impressed uh, by the new uh, tyres, uh, superiority uh, and precision, uh, very good uh, following of the, the steering that I gave, uh, 
very good handling, uh, both on the on the dry track as well as the as they are on the on the wet uh, part of the track. Very impressed and uh, quite a gap to the to the competition. Michelin remains a premium brand and is obviously best evaluated with cars like BMW, Peugeot, and Volvo. In 1966, The Sound of Music won the Oscar for Best Picture, England defeated Germany in the World Cup, and Irv Gordon bought his Volvo P1800. My relationship with my uh, 1800 uh, uh, was love at first sight, uh, June 30th, 1966. The day I took one for a test ride. While most people never keep the same car long enough to see their odometer click over to zero, this retired science teacher from New York will soon see his click over for the 20th time, making him the first man to travel two million miles in the same car. I mean, through good weather, bad weather, I used to go skiing with the car. I took my family skiing with this car when the kids were small. Uh, it's been an ice and snow and sleet and hail and every other kind of bad weather you can think of. And it's, it's just been terrific. It's just been terrific. So, um, you know, it's not one of those things you go out and you buy a car and say, I'm going to buy this car and put a million miles or two million miles. It's just one of those things that happens. Commuting every day and just doing those things that people usually do. Only I've been doing it for 36 years. Every time Gordon gets behind the wheel of his car, he's breaking the world record. And soon, his Odo will click over for the 20th time. His car's long life is largely due to his almost obsessive maintenance habits. I've been very fortunate. I, I'm a stickler for maintenance. Maintenance is a lot cheaper than repairs. And on 36-year-old cars, there's a lot more you can do yourself. But Volvos are built to last. So they don't build things with obsolescence put into them. It's, they build it with a purpose, and the purpose in this case is for uh, durability. Every gen Volvo Longevity has always been a selling point for Volvo. In this old ad, traveling salesman Everyone Norbert Lysi bragged about how far his P1800 had traveled. It has 774,000 miles on it. At this rate, I'm never going to get to buy a new one. For Irv Gordon, that was almost 1.3 million miles ago. The car has lasted longer than many things in his life. I got married, I had a couple of kids, I got divorced, still have my kids, uh, I still have the car. And the next million miles? The car seems to show no signs of getting tired. Uh, everything still works, including the, uh, including the clock on the dad's point. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have my teeth by then, I'm going to have all my hair by then. Um, you know, it's <laughs> three million miles. That's another going to be another 15 years. By that time, I'll be on Social Security. Gordon racked up the miles with a daily 125-mile commute and with his love for the open road. He's been known to drive from New York to Montreal for lunch, whatever the weather. We'll end this week on that heartwarming note. But so you stay on track and up to speed, make sure you catch next week's Drive. <laughs>